friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a fun fold card for you guys using Lawn Fawn's Critters from the Past. I'm coloring with my Copic markers today, so I've stamped my images with Memento Tuxedo Black ink on some Copic friendly cardstock. And I'm starting with my Brontosaurus. And for her, I'm using BG70, BG72, BG75, and a little bit of BG78 towards the end. I started with that BG70, and I'm just doing an all-over layer to really saturate the paper since she's such a big image. It just helps your ink to be able to flow a little bit better. Then I'm coming in with my BG72 and starting to map out my shadows. Normally, if you watch my videos, I do tend to color darkest to lightest, but like I mentioned, she is such a large image, and when I'm working with those, I often do the reverse and start with my lightest color, build up towards the darkest, and then back down again. So now I'm going to come in with that BG75, which is going to be my darkest for my shadows, and I'm going to just go right over the edge of that BG72, just using that a little bit more sparingly and adding that definition in. I'm mostly sticking to the underside of her body and then a little bit on her neck where her head would be casting it in shadow. And um, then I'll keep my lightest portion for the upper part of her body because that is obviously where the sun would hit. So now I'm going back in with my BG72 and blending that out a bit more and uh, coming up a little bit further now that I know where I want my shadows to be. I can add a little bit more of that medium color and then I'm going to go back to my BG70 and start to blend out that edge. Now there is quite a bit of difference between the BG70 and the BG72. The BG70 is such a pale color. It's really good for like fairies wings and um, like bees wings, insect wings, things like that. Um, just because it's almost transparent. But um, I really wanted this brontosaurus to have a little bit of a softer look and I wanted to do some fun colors. So I did stick with uh, these three shades. To help with that transition, I'm going to go back to my BG72 and do some more flicking up from the belly and really kind of get soft as I get towards the edge of those flicks. I'm pushing down a little bit harder as I press down and then lifting off light so that it kind of really fades off. And then I'm going to do a little bit of tip to tip action, just taking that BG70, picking up a little bit of that BG72 and blending that transition even further so it's nice and smooth. Then to help that along even further and give my dinosaurs a little bit more character, I'm going to be doing some dot detail. So for the brontosaurus, I took away the BG70 and I'm just using these three darker shades, starting with that BG78, just doing a little bit of dots, mostly on the underside, kind of sticking to where I did my shadows. And then I'll come in with the BG75 and the BG72 and just do the same thing. Just adding some little freckles and um, kind of like a rougher skin texture and just really bringing the dinosaur to life. Next I'm going to color the pterodactyl and for him I'm using YR00, YR01, and YR02. I'm starting with the YR02 since this is a much smaller image I am doing my typical darkest to lightest. So I laid in my shadows with the YR02, my darkest shade, and then I'm going to blend with the YR01 as my mid-tone, just softening up the edge of that YR02, and then blending in all the rest of that area with the YR00, just filling that in, making sure to catch the edge of the YR01 so I have a nice transition. And then once again, I will go back and do the dot detail. I'm going to do this on all of my dinosaurs, just so they have a cohesive look. 
For the T-Rex, I'm using BV02, BV13, and BV04. So the BV13 is going to be my mid-tone because it does fall somewhere in the middle of the BV02 and the BV04 on the color chart. So I started with the BV02 just kind of laying in a little bit of color. Uh, again, just to kind of prep it for coloring since it is another larger image. And then I'm going straight to my BV04 and laying in my darkest tones. So this card was completely inspired by the movie Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. My boys and I just saw this recently and we are big Jurassic Park, Jurassic World fans. Um, after we came home from the movie, my boys have been uh, re-watching all the original ones again. Um, we just really love those movies. So um, even though Blue is a Velociraptor and not a T-Rex, I kind of wanted to pay homage and have kind of a bluish dinosaur on here. So I do have like the green blue of the Brontosaurus and then now I have a more kind of purplish blue or periwinkle toned uh, T-Rex kind of in honor of Blue in the movie. So once I finish her up, I'm just going to go back in with my darkest two shades, in this case the BV13 and the BV04, and add that dot detail in once again. I wasn't sure yet what color I wanted to do my baby dinosaur, so I'm moving on to my eggs for now. And for those, I'm using G20 and G21 using the G21 to add a bit of shading down the right side of both eggs and then blending out with the G20. And for the spotted egg, I'm going to go back with the G21 and fill those in. So I decided on going with E70, E71, and E74 for the baby dinosaur and then I ended up not liking it at all. I thought he looked much too natural and kind of out of place with the other dinosaurs that had the fun colors. So I tried to cover that up with some blue violets. I used BV11 over the entire dinosaur and then I came in with BV13 for the shadows. And I didn't like that either. I didn't like the brown undertones that showed through, but I did leave the colors in because I'm going to end up coloring a new baby dinosaur off camera, but these are the two shades that I ended up using without the brown underneath. For my leaves, I'm using YG61, YG63, and YG67. I started with the YG61 and colored in the entire leaf then colored about half of it with the YG63 and then added my shading with the YG67 and then just went back down in the reverse. For my pebbles, I'm using E74 and E77. Using the E77 for the darkest on the bottom right and then blending towards the top left with the E74. And I'll color some extra leaves and three palm trees off camera just to save time because the video was getting kind of long. I wanted to do a Z fold card today, so I'm starting with half a sheet of 8.5 by 11 cardstock. So it is cut down the center at 4 and a quarter. And then I am scoring at 5.5 inches and flipping the cardstock over and scoring again at 2 and 3 quarters inches. And I'm going to have two pieces on my card, so I had to do it for both layers. I'm going to reinforce those score lines with a bone folder just to get the creases nice and moving. And there you can see how the card folds together. I used the Lawn Fawn Stitch Mountain Borders to cut out one continuous piece using that craft card stock. And I'm going to flip that over and add some liquid glue to the back of that and adhere that down over my light blue panel. I'll give that a few seconds to dry and then fold it together a couple of times to get that moving since the cardstock is extra thick now with both layers. I'm going to start adhering my images to set my scene starting with one of the palm trees over on the far right and then I'll add the brontosaurus overlapping that 
and then I just want to adjust that as needed so that the Z fold is not covering up any part of that brontosaurus because I want it to look like one continuous card whether it is folded or open all the way. So then I can add my pterodactyl next and I want to leave that overhanging just a little bit so I'm going to just glue it down on one half to the edge right where the fold is so that it kind of overlaps into the second panel once the card is open. So I'll have two kind of hidden areas on the card when it's all folded together. I'll have the second half of the first panel and then the first half of the second panel. So I'm going to create little scenes in both of those that will be kind of a nice surprise when the card is finally opened all the way. So on the second panel of the front half of the card, I'm doing a little nest for my dinosaur eggs and my baby dinosaur with some of the leaves and one of the palm trees. And on the second part of my hidden panel, I'm going to have the T-Rex. I added the remaining leaves and rocks to fill out my scene. And then I took the cap die of the little mountains and I die cut that out of some gray cardstock because I wanted something different. I didn't want there to be snow in the background of the dinosaurs and I didn't want there to be active lava either. So I thought maybe this is like, um, from past eruptions just up at the top. So I added that to three of the mountain tops. For my sentiment, I stamped the Wish Big also on some gray cardstock and die cut that with one of the Everyday Sentiment Banners dies. And I'm going to glue that down in the top right corner and trim off the excess. I'm taking the large and medium clouds from the spring showers dies and I'm going to tuck those into the landscape behind two of the mountains. So the first one is going to be on the first panel and then the second one is going to go on the first half of the second panel so that will also be another hidden element. And at that point I thought that the card was done and I actually photographed it and uploaded the video clips to iMovie. But the more I looked at the photos, the more I felt like the dinosaurs looked like they were floating in the air. There was nothing to ground them to the earth since the earth was also the same piece that made up the mountains. So the next morning I decided to come in and film a new ending to the video and uh, just complete the card by adding some dot detail. So I'm using E71, E74, and E77 to add in some earth beneath their feet, kind of like a sandy texture. Just using that same dot detail that brought the dinosaurs to life. So it still looks uh, like it goes along with what we've already done with the images. And I was much happier with that. So I added all three shades, just really filling that in and kind of grounding them to the earth. And that is going to complete our card for today. There you can see how it folds up to make one complete scene, but then opens up to reveal two kind of hidden bonus scenes. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Jurassic World inspired Z Fold card. This was my first time making a Z Fold card and it was really easy to do. So let me know if this is something that you would try. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would love to have your support. It really means the world. Here's two extra videos you may also be interested in, so hopefully those will tide you over to my next one. Until then, I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.